So hello, this is Thursday, June the 23rd, and I'm going to give you an update of the observation hives in this building. There are three of them. The one with the white entrance is the newest. The two to the right were installed at the same time. So I thought I would go over this and we'll see what's going on. Inside temperature, outside temperature, we're in the 70s today. Yesterday it was in the high 90s. So this is a day of relief for these bees. And we're inside the observation hive building. Hive number 27 is the middle observation hive. Give you a little history on that. We collected frames of eggs and larvae from a resource hive, a nucleus hive. If you want to see how we did that, look down in the video description. There's a link that will show you when I populated these observation hives. So we're going to open this up and we're going to see an update. I pulled this one without a queen. But I made sure that they had eggs so that they could create their own queen. And if you see, we have the top frame here. These are in triples, and that's a foundationless frame. Then we have heavy wax, plastic foundation, and the bottom of each of the observation hives is where I started the brood and resources. So they're pretty loaded up here, but good news. We know the eggs are gone because they've been here too long. They're only eggs for three days. And we left the queen with the parent colony in this case. And that's so that each of these colonies are different and we can see how they develop. So what will happen when we have eggs and they have no queen? They build queen cells. And that's what we see right here. There are two of them. So we see the abdomen of a nurse bee here bagging out of a queen cell. These cells are located at the bottom edge of the frame. Now normally you would think these are swarm cells, but because we pulled them without a queen, there is no existing queen to swarm out. So technically, they're emergency replacement queen cells. And the bees will feed these continuously. That's why getting an opportunity to look up into one of these queen cells without a nurse bee in it would be extremely rare, because as soon as one backs out, another goes in and they're feeding royal jelly. And that's because the nurse bees, they're the top consumers in the colony of pollen. So the bees have made bee bread, pollen resources, and they will secrete royal jelly from their glands. And most of these nurse bees that do this kind of work are under 10 days old. And uh, more than a thousand feedings. So they'll feed day and night. And these cells will be capped around the ninth day. Now this is what would happen if you looked at the whole deep frame. Can you spot the queen cells on here? This is a brood frame. You can see the cinnamon colored capping and now I put in a little text there for you so you can see exactly where the queen cells are located and how those might look when you're looking at a frame. You also notice that they're kind of running out of room in this colony because we have nectar stored in a lot of cells. You can see how shiny that is. You see the capped brood for these are workers. And in the top right, there may be some drone sized cells, but they all have nectar in it on this frame. I'm going to show you both sides of the hive so that you're not left wondering what that side looks like. But remember, with this observation hive, which is three frames tall, the frames are in triples. So there are four sides of frames that we cannot see. So what we're watching here is the outside facing frame of the first one to the left, which is the east side of this observation hive. And I will show you the other side eventually. Mostly on these uh, brood frames, you would see nurse bees. They're in decline. Their numbers will just go down until these queens emerge. One of them hopefully will prevail and we're going to let them take their own course. I'm not going to decide which of the queen cells to keep, which to discard. There may even be another queen cell somewhere in between these frames. But I'm going to let them do their own thing. And of course, we'll observe through future updates exactly how this colony succeeds or fails. And so I've left uh, some frames foundationless. And that's so we can also get an opportunity to see how they draw it comb on their own. This is just a close up. We've got a bee top center there with... Uh, pollen on her corbicula, which are the pollen baskets that are formed into her hind legs. 
and she's doing a waggle dance to communicate where she got that resource with other foragers in the hive. If they like what she has, they'll head out. Now, nutrition is critical for these bees right now because what are they doing? They're producing queens. So when they're producing queens, the future health and well-being of the entire colony is at stake. So diverse resources in the form of protein, which comes from flowers, and that's the pollen. That's what they need to be bringing in with regularity right now. And there are some cells that we can see here that do have some pollen in them, but this frame is not loaded with pollen, nor is the other side. So I have to make an assumption that there are plenty of pollen stores in between on the faces of the frames that we cannot see. So here we go around to the other side of it, and I have numbered these. So this is number 27, it's the center frame. The first one on the left is number 21, and the first one I populated on the other side is number 31. Now here we see natural comb. This is what they do. Now all I did for the wooden frame that's in here, I primed it by rubbing beeswax on that top liter piece of wood. That's it. So if they had built wild comb, I would have let them because these are observation hives and we get a chance to see the bees working. These bees are building beeswax comb, all natural, and that's just what they do. We have put sugar syrup on this observation hive to make sure they have the resources they needed during periods of rain. It's been really hot lately, so we have the garden hose oasis within 60 feet of this hive and what I do is I have a drip irrigation hose those black hoses that are permeable so you can turn on the water and drips just form throughout the length of the hose and the bees can come to that so we wanted to keep them hydrated bees that have access to water can keep their hives cool no matter what now just looking at this colony we can tell they're not in distress you can look at them when it's really hot outside and also see how they circulate air through the hive. What I was hoping to get here is because we're on the outside and we have plexiglass here, we can see the underside of some of these bees. I was hoping to see wax production on their abdomens because that's where you would see little wax shingles coming out. They have four wax glands on each side of their abdomen on the underside there. And I did not see any. So I wouldn't say they're in hyper wax production mode here. It has taken them their entire time in this hive to build these two teardrop shaped natural comb pieces and it also looks like the cells are pretty big. So I haven't decided yet if they're building out drone cells or if these are going to be worker cells but if I look at the diameter of the cell compared to the diameter of the worker that's going into it my guess is these are going to be drone cells. Now that doesn't mean they're going to produce a bunch of drones. Uh, they can also use it to store resources. But if they ever needed to produce drones, it would be right here. So the thing is, we can look at the abdomens of the bees. We see they're fully extended. We see these bees are well fed. If you look at your honeybees inside the hive and their abdomens are contracted, if their abdomens are shorter than the length of their wings, then there's a very good chance they're not properly nourished. So you might think about boosting them a little bit or providing something that you think they may be needing and lacking. So, but these are nice and healthy. Good sign. Things are looking good here. And it's going to be interesting to see what occurs after they cap those queen cells. Then those queens are going to emerge very soon. And we will follow that, of course. I also will be able to show and view what bees do with queen cells once the queens emerge from them. They're going to generally chew them apart and re-amend that wax to the comb on the frame. They don't tear it apart and cast them out. We also might get lucky and observe the first queen to emerge coming out and stinging the not yet emerged queen still in her cell. And then once that happens, if she kills the other queen, the workers will excavate that queen from her cell and get rid of her. There are undertaker bees in here that will remove dead bees, bee parts, they do clean up. So there's a lot going on. And this is the whole purpose of observation hives so that we can see what's going on. And with three observation hives, 
very good chance we can see some evidence of every activity between all three. If you have just one, then uh, it's potluck, especially when you have triple frames. So much is going on behind the scenes. And here's what the frame looks like. Here's the larger piece of comb to the left. And then we have the smaller one top right there. Again, they're looking like drone cells to me. And they'll continue to work them until they fill the whole frame. So that's another fun marker of the progress that they'll be making. Bees that have a queen right colony are much better at producing beeswax. So when the queen's pheromone, if she's laying and present, that causes the bees to invest in infrastructure at a much higher rate. So now we're going to colony 21. We pulled this frame, uh, several frames in fact, out of a nucleus hive and I brought the queen with them. So look, these were installed at the exact same time. There has been much more wax production in this hive compared to the one that we just looked at. So we start at the top and we're going down. So there's triples here. Now this is the west side, not a lot of wax production up on these waxed plastic foundations. And then we get to the bottom. This is a lot of drone brood, but it's opposite a side that has a bunch of worker brood. That's why I chose to pull this frame along with the other two. So we took three frames from a 10 frame nuke, which was configured five over five. And uh, this one, we stole their queen. So that colony has to bounce back. They'll be doing what we just saw in the middle observation hive, which is producing queen cells and replacing their lost queen because we left them with eggs and resources. And that's what my resource hives are for. Now, if something happens with the other colony and the queens don't fly out, mate, come back and start doing what they're supposed to do, we will have to, of course, get a queen cell from another hive and uh, restore that. And if we come to that issue, I will show you how I do it. Now we're looking at drone brood here and look at all the drones standing around doing nothing. Drones are extremely expensive to a bee colony, especially when this entire colony consists of three frames. Look at this drone. Now this is a drone that's just emerged. Look at the wings held flat and tight against the body. Look how soft and fuzzy this uh, drone looks. So that's a male bee. They contribute nothing. They consume. So that is reproductive resources for this colony of bees. So some people refer to them as flying sperm. And that's because they spread the genetics from this hive. And here we have a newly emerged drone being fed by a very fuzzy newly emerged worker bee, a nurse bee. So drones don't feed themselves, they depend on trophallaxis, which means they have to get their resources from these worker bees. Queens also only consume. They don't contribute back food, but of course they contribute eggs and the reproductive stock for the hive. So you can see how persistent this male bee is, just constantly reaching forward with its four limbs and just grabbing at this nurse bee and encouraging her to feed it something. Now, this is the good news. We know that the queen has established herself. These are eggs. Look at that nice comb. So the queen has put mostly one egg in each cell. Now she came from a resource hive, which means she's a new queen this year. And you'll notice that some of the cells have two eggs in them. And that's not alarming because we know that she's alive. We've seen her. If you want to see her again, you can click on the link in the video description and see that video. And so because she's a young queen, sometimes she's overproductive and she deposits more than one egg per cell. So the eggs that are dead center will likely remain. And those that are along the edges, the workers may go down and uh, collect and consume. That's right. Nurse bees can actually eat eggs if they don't like where they are or if something about that egg does not smell right. Now what happens is that the third day when these eggs hatch, they release a pheromone which will stimulate these nurse bees to start feeding them right away. Now I'm also wondering if some of what we're seeing through the cell, because it is translucent and we're seeing the cells on the opposite side, some of what may look to be double egg laying could be 
the actual egg on the opposite side of the same foundation frame. At any rate, it looks good to me. Now we're going to close up look at their nectar storage. This is where they're making honey. So they're transferring the resources from their crop, what's known as a honey crop, and that goes uh, bee to bee. So foraging bees come in, they deliver that, the storage bees, storekeeper bees, whatever you want to call them, draw that into their crop, and then each time that it transfers, it dehydrates a little bit and they deposit it in those cells. These are open larvae. So these are developing bees. It's a great opportunity for us to look at them to see how well they're fed, how well they're attended to by these nurse bees. And of course, just as before, we're looking at the outside of three frames. So we only have access to two sides. So the first frame, the eastern side, and the third frame, the western side, which means there are four sides of frames that are not available to us to view. So I'm making the assumption that there's a lot more production going on here. Top center there, very young, newly emerged worker bee. She will become a nurse bee and look to the right there, another oversized drone just hanging around doing nothing in particular. Now what I did is I've jumped back to hive number 31, which is the oldest and most established observation hive in this building. And there's the queen, so I thought I would give you an opportunity to look at her. She's not marked. She's new this year, but she's had a rough go. If you look at her wings, the edges have been chewed. So they're a little bit frayed. She's also kind of small for a queen. And they were collected as a swarm. So they've been in this hive since May 29th. This was the swarm that I used on my queen mandibular pheromone attractant to get the uh, colony, the collection of uh, swarming bees in their bivouac location to be a little larger. That worked. And I put them all in a bucket after uh, some manipulation there. And then uh, we waited for them to walk into this observation hive. Not an easy task. I had to hand carry some bees inside, put them in through the access panel, and then get them to occupy the hives so that they would smell the hive and think that it was okay for bees to occupy. These were brand new hives. Of course, pulling frames of brood is the best way, easiest way to install them in a hive. But this particular one had all brand new frames in it. So they had heavy wax foundation with wooden frames and none of the wax was drawn. So everything we're looking at here is newly developed by these resident bees since May 29th. And she's laying a lot of eggs. In fact, every available cell right now either has an egg in it or she started putting eggs in it on the face frame again. So we again make the assumption that there's a lot more production going on between and we've had hot weather recently in the 70s right now, but yesterday was in the 90s. This observation hive had a bunch of bees bearding on the outside. But it was interesting to see the flow of air inside. The surplus workers were just getting out of the way. And uh, this colony has plenty of workers. So if they're laying eggs now, we know that 21 days from now they will be emerging from their pupa state and the caps will be chewed out by the workers and they'll go straight to work as nurse bees for up to the first 10 days. And uh, they're also licking a little condensation off the interior surface of the glass here. And uh, I think we're doing okay with all three colonies with different things going on in each. And if you have troubles picking a queen out on a frame like this, look for that shiny thorax just behind her head. It's very distinctive. If you look at the thorax of the workers next to her, they're fuzzy. They're covered in fur. Hairs. Hairs with lots of split ends on them. And her abdomen is goes well beyond her wings. So the workers, if you notice, their abdomens run roughly the length of their wings, sometimes a little farther if they're well fed. And uh, the queen, you notice, her wings go halfway down her abdomen. Very easy to spot. The number one mistake that new beekeepers make when they're trying to spot the queen is they pick out drones. So the distinction there would be looking at the eyes of the queen as well, other than the really long abdomen that she has. Looking at her eyes, if they come together at the top, 
those would be drone eyes so that would be a drone now I pulled away so you could kind of see what this looks like and how easy it would be to miss seeing that queen so that's hive 31 Now the other interesting thing too is sometimes you'll see a queen laying eggs in newly drawn comb and the cells are too shallow for that larva to develop. So what happens is they'll build out the cell walls as the larvae is also developing. So that's interesting too. They have to have the resources to do that and uh, so they'll continue drawing out the cells and finishing things off. They're inspired to do a lot of work here because we have a laying queen. The pheromones are strong. QMP, the queen's mandibular pheromone. Uh, the attendant retinue of workers here are constantly feeding her, licking her, passing on her pheromone to all other bees in this observation hive. This one has all medium frames and they're in triples as well. And also paying close attention to the abdomens, the underside here, you can look for mites as well. So that's not a meaningful way of counting mites, but you can betcha if you see varro destructor mites on their abdomens while they're going up the glass, you've got an issue. One of the easy ways to treat for mites in an observation hive would be oxalic acid vaporization, because you can do that with the hive closed up, do that through the entrance, close off the entrance for 10 minutes, and you've got a treatment and you can observe the bottom boards and see dead mites falling. So none of these colonies have been treated. We're going to observe them top left there. Look at the giant abdomen of that worker bee, that drone. Nice, fat, plump, heavy bodied bees. No great wonder they are frequently mistaken for the queen. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you appreciate the update. If you want to see future updates on these observation hives, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.